Okay. Good evening, everyone. So we are on live stream. We now uh, proceed with our uh, presentation for the night, which is uh, safe design and installation of LPG and methane gas piping systems. Uh, this was originally presented by engineer Henry Suarez, a professional mechanical engineer, at the same time also a registered master plumber years back but uh, was able to get a uh, permission get a copy from him of his original powerpoint which we have upgraded updated for this uh, presentation so uh, please uh, bear with me because uh, i think this is the only third time that i try to present this for uh, in a in a seminar in a <coughs> And for a webinar, it's my first time. So anyway, so both of us will still be learning because I'm also, although I had a long experience in uh, refinery engineering when I was a young engineer, okay? So let's have our opening prayers. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord God, we praise and thank you for uh, fixing again our schedule so that we can conduct this uh, webinar and this very uh, critical topic on safety of gas installations and Lord God we thank you for your continuous guidance and blessing for us so that uh, we can uh, uh, pass through this uh, pandemic Lord God we uh, ask that uh, you guide the uh, yours truly as the speaker and also you guide our uh, colleagues in the professional engineering practice that they may be able to uh, uh, absorb as much as possible skill and knowledge and uh, uh, their capacity should uh, increase as uh, professionals so Lord God we also ask that you continue keep us away from that sickness, from the COVID, and keep us away from accidents. All of this, God, Lord God, we ask in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who libre and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. So again, uh, good evening everyone. I'm Engineer William Masintuan. I'm uh, a, a BSEE and a BSME graduate, uh, uh, but uh, I'm a professional electrical engineer and a registered master plumber uh, I'm practicing MEPFS S because I've added uh, solar sustainable and safety to my present practice so uh, here is my short resume for your reference okay so now we proceed with our table of contents so again as usual we have our introduction usually it's a lengthy introduction I tried as much as possible to uh, uh, give you some backgrounders uh, on the dangers of uh, LPG gas installation so that uh, we, are, we would be uh, put on uh, the same platforms in understanding the dangers of uh, inadequate uh, provisions in gas piping system. Of course, uh, number two are the different uh, situations that have happened in the past which should make us, uh, again, uh, uh, ready for uh, this uh, gas piping works. And then number three is the gas piping system configurations. And number four is the useful design guide tables being included here. And we have uh, piping material standards or specifications. Number six is the pipe sizing methods. Okay, and then last but not the least is the inspection, testing, and commissioning of uh, uh, gas piping. So, on the introduction, let me uh, give you this uh, slide which uh, classifies all these uh, various gases like LPG is liquefied petroleum gas, then we have liquefied natural gas or LNG, and we have the CNG which is compressed natural gas, and of course we have methane which is as a... Uh, a, uh, a form symbolic form of CH4 okay and uh, 
all of these gases, the LPG, the LNG, the CNG, and also this methane, uh, you know, or they are almost the same. They are all highly explosive and very flammable. Okay, while uh, there's another gas, the hydrogen sulfide gas H2S. The H2S is uh, has a bad smell, and uh, and uh, it is also flammable, and it is also toxic and poisonous. So all this uh, LPG, LNG, CNG, and methane are not toxic, but they are highly explosive. No, so in other words, uh, very dangerous. Yeah, hydrogen sulfide may not be as flammable as uh, these four gases above no but uh, uh, it is toxic and poisonous so we must be be careful when uh, dealing with uh, gases okay introduction to LPG is the most commercially available and uh, cheapest gas available used for fuel okay because uh, maybe you have known about uh, of course there's methane methane is a uh, it's also a brother or sister of this kind of gas. No? Uh, both of them come from from nature. They are produced from nature. No? Of course, LPG comes from the processing of crude oil or uh, um, gas from uh, underneath the surface of the earth. Like, for example, you have uh, the Malampaya gas, the one that is being mined uh, underneath the, the West Philippine Sea near the 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 waters the sea waters in Palawan west of Palawan there is the, there is the Malampaya gas which uh, according to uh, information uh, will only last up to 2004 or 2005 so it's uh, uh, it's almost done no so now I know the deeper department Department of Energy is trying to source uh, natural gas from other countries today so that's why. Uh, it is very important today that uh, we also have to uh, uh, source uh, or increase our renewable uh, energy production like in solar and wind and uh, of course geothermal, uh, our country should go into geothermal again and of course hydroelectric okay? and also maybe our country, the government should consider building nuclear power plants because uh, uh, this problem and, and gas you know uh, will, will continue to come because uh, gas or crude oil and coal are finite in other words uh, may hangganan no okay so LPG is a mixture of propane about 30 to 40 percent and butane which is about 60 to 70 percent. LPG is stored as a, a liquid under pressure. It is uh, colorless and odorless in its natural state. LPG vapor is heavier than air. Therefore, the vapor may flow along the ground and into drains and to be ignited at a considerable distance from the source of leakage. So in other words, if you have uh, canals, manholes or uh, any uh, low-lying area uh, shallow areas with uh, some dents in the in the in the surface in the finished surface the LPG gas tend to occupy that space there okay? unless there is a strong wind that will uh, dissipate it or diffuse it okay? LPG forms a flammable mixture when mixed with air within the flammability limit to large volumes of vapor, air mixture, and thus cause considerable hazard. With the mere, with the mere presence of a, of a spark or of an arc or a lighted cigarette or uh, a lighter, you know, then uh, there could be the danger of explosion and fire. Okay. Last paragraph, LPG is authorized before distribution such, such that any escape of the gas may, may be no noticeable by its spell. So, uh, they, they uh, add uh, ethyl mercaptan uh, in the commercial LPG 
so as to make sure that uh, uh, human beings should be able to uh, determine that there is a leak. But uh, the LPG that comes from the refinery, from the uh, processing of crude oil, and also the gas that comes from, let's say, the platforms, from the gas platforms, uh, either in the Middle East, in the North Seas, or elsewhere in the world, uh, it is usually uh, odorless. Okay. Okay. So uh, then methane. Methane. The description is is mainly natural gas, colorless, odorless, highly flammable gas, highly explosive, but it is not toxic, not corrosive. Methane gas explosions are responsible for the. 2007 Glorieta 2 explosions and many deadly mining disasters. Okay. Uh, methane is present in sewer water like in uh, like the toxic hydrogen sulfide. In septic tanks, in sewage treatment plants, together with toxic hydrogen sulfide may also enter homes from toilets if trap water seal in the laboratory and in the floor drains are uh, lost. No? In other words, when the water inside the trap seals get evaporated or is lost due to siphonage. Okay. So, uh, here is our suggestion on how to deal with uh, the presence of methane and their basement is to have gas detectors all the time, just like uh, in LPG. And the hydrogen sulfide same as the methane, it's also produced from uh, septic, and of course there's plenty of this in uh, in in uh, fossil fuels in gas, as well as in uh, in the refinery when they process the crude oil. Hydrogen sulfide is also produced, and therefore they have to burn it in the refinery. If you have been, uh, if you have passed through or gone through a uh, an oil refinery you would usually see uh, a big pipe going through the air and there is a fire on top of it and that is the, L the hydrogen sulfide gas being, being uh, burned because if you do not burn it at, and it is heavier than air, it goes to the, to the land, to the uh, surface it might uh, poison the people, the operators in the operation of the refinery so, both of these, uh, methane and hydrogen sulfide, as well as LPG, must have, uh, or we must have a detector. Uh, we must have detectors and needed to automate. Or the, the least that you could do is to sound an alarm, but the, in LPG systems, we have to activate the automatic shut off of the supply line in the LPG line. Okay. So now we go to the safety. So we discuss first the safety because before we go to the discussion of the of the requirements of the LPG gas piping. Here are three successive slides where I tried to research from the Wikipedia about previous LPG explosions that were recorded. So I'm sorry, this is a uh, should be recorded no, without PT. So. Uh, I only started to, to uh, get some info in uh, from this point. No? August 19, 2000, a natural gas transmission pipeline ruptured and a fire killed 12 campers in New Mexico, USA. And then the following year, and that, uh, 27, uh, January 17, 2001, uh, natural gas stored underground in Hutchinson, Kansas leaked into the empty brine caverns. Two explosions resulted from the leak. The one destroyed two businesses and damaged 26 others. Another destroyed a trailer park, killing two people. And here is the, another one. Arkhangelsk explosion in Russia, 2004, March 16. LPG gas explosion in an apartment killed 58 people. Look at that so many people dying. No? Reportedly, a former gas technician caused the explosion due to dispute. May 11, 2004, a plastics factory in uh, Glasgow 
was destroyed by gas explosion. Okay. In September September 9, 2010, in San Bruno, California, a suburb of uh, San Francisco, in a LPG gas leak and explosion killed eight people. 53 homes were burned and over 120 homes were damaged. See? So really dangerous. February 10, 2011, in Allentown, Pennsylvania, an LPG gas explosion killed five people and levels a city block. Wow. Dangerous, really. And again, 2012, in Brentwood, New York, gas explosion levels a house, killing toddler and wounding 17 others. 2012 also, Connecticut, an online Associated Press news article from Boston Herald, according to the Dunbury News, a propane leak gas ex explosion killed a man. And in 2012 also, Massachusetts, a gas explosion destroyed two buildings, including one housing, a strip club, damaging a total of 42 buildings. Wow. 2013, LPG gas explosion, Rosario, Argentina, 21 dead. So, all... The same in this year, this was the year when the Serendra LPG explosion happened. If you remember Serendra in the Bonifacio Global City, uh, it was in the same year, 2013. So, 2012-2014, East Harlem apartment in New York, uh, 8 people killed when 70 were injured. Again, 2014 in Taiwan, Kaohsiung. Uh, due to a gas leak, uh, the public roads in Kaohsiung, okay, big explosion, doesn't mention of uh, the fatalities. No? And the third page, August 10, 2016, LPG gas explosion occurred in an apartment in Maryland. Seven killed, 40 people injured. Same year, 2016, October, series of gas explosions in Oregon, no? and eight people were injured, and uh, uh, damages seventeen million dollars. Okay. Paris, uh, twenty nineteen, Central Paris, LPG gas explosion in in a house with a bakery. So uh, maybe the the LPG tanks uh, supply uh, supplying uh, fuel to the bakery, you know, had had a leak, Ki uh, killed four and about forty injured. January uh, 18, 2019, a fuel pipeline in Mex Mexico killing at least 66 people. See? So many people dying in this explosion and 76 others. July 2019, apparent gas explosion in the Fountain Shopping Plaza in, in Plantation, Florida. And August 2019, gas tanker in Tanzania killing 75 people, injuring at least 55. And uh, December 6, LPG gas explosion occurred in Black Wood Flats in Slovakia. Seven people killed and a dozen. So, you see, uh, it seems like uh, LPG gas explosion happened. Huh? Uh, all around the world so in other words people seem to uh, uh, to be not not really uh, conscious of the safety of LPG gas today uh, I remember there was also this big explosion in uh, Calaca Batangas in the Phoenix uh, uh, Phoenix Petroleum Terminal uh, I think uh, it, it happened maybe several years ago, maybe seven, eight, nine, ten years ago, or even more, and uh, uh, the fire took very long to, con to be controlled because uh, of the volume maybe of the stored LPG gas in the bullet tanks in, the, in that uh, Phoenix uh, uh, petroleum terminal. In the country, as I mentioned earlier, in 2013, the LPG gas explosion in Serendra 2 happened in May 31, 2013, which killed four people. So you would see the devastation in these pictures. The walls of the condominium unit and the sixth floor of the Serendra 2 were shattered. Uh, uh, the walls were torn away 
were shattered away and uh, that's the picture of the of the condominium here and uh, the debris reached as far as this van here in this other uh, oval circle no so you could see how far away the concrete debris in the wall was uh, blown away uh, in this van it killed three people so that's how devastating the the surrender explosion was no and this is a uh, a closer look at the the van that was damaged no okay so therefore you must be very careful i i was part of the team that went to do some investigations because uh a General Carlito Romero of the Bureau of Fire at that time in 2013 uh, was the Chief Fire Marshal and uh, General Romero was uh, uh, together with me in the IIE Electrical Safety Committee from 2006 to 2011 uh, uh, or 2012 and uh, of course, in 2012-2013, he was then appointed as the Chief Fire Marshal, so he concentrated on his works uh, with the Bureau of Fire, with the BFP. And he invited me to join uh, the uh, investigations. And we were able to find out that the detectors, the gas detectors in the Surrender 2, uh, were, uh, were just plugged in. No? So supposing this is your detector, it has a wiring and it was just plugged into an outlet it should have been connected per uh, i mean the wiring should have been connected uh, permanently meaning to say spliced together in the box not using this plug because the problem with this plug is when somebody un removes it or unplugs it then you will no longer have your detector operating so that was one finding that we were we were uh, able to uh, determine no so our suggestion is detectors must be permanently wired to the uh, circuit electrical circuit wiring to the emergency uh, circuit okay so that uh, it will always be functioning okay and uh, gas detectors should be mounted not more than four meters away from lpg gas appliance like in this uh, slide four meters away not more than four meters away and not more than uh, 12 inches or 0.3 meters from the floor because you know gas is heavier than air so usually it would be occupying occupying a space close to the floor okay and uh, again we review the uh, characteristics of LPG its mixture of uh, propane and butane and uh, is heavier than air so take note, heavier than air, that means it occupies close to the floor. And uh, uh, when mixed with air, then it becomes uh, highly flammable. And it is deodorized, or it is odorized by the addition of ethyl mercaptan. So, what was the problem with the Serendra? Uh, in, in the Serendra explosion, they, the, 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 the owner of the development put their... Uh, LPG bullet tanks, no? so they have what we call the Bonifacio Gas Corporation, which uh, uh, distributed LPG fuel gas to the condominium projects in there. No? So they have a centralized LPG bullets, okay? Uh, the volumes are quite big, and uh, the LPG lines were piped. Uh, there was piping of the LPG lines going to the different buildings. And uh, uh, the lines were provided just like supplying water to a building LPG was supplied to the entire building all of those Serendra buildings so but of course they stop it now because uh, it, it is too dangerous no? uh, the engineering maybe is not yet uh, as adequate at as it should be uh, th there are not enough LPG gas detectors maybe and there are not enough solenoid valves installed there no so the the solution for this is uh, to have this gas detectors this one this is uh, the solution no is to have a gas detector and a solenoid valve the solenoid valve is an electrical device so that when uh, 
uh, your detector detects the presence of a leak gas, it will send a signal to your solenoid valve so that it will automatically close or move to the closed position and stop the flow of LPG gas. That's the only way. Uh, in most that I've seen, designers, mechanical designers, piping designers, would just simply provide manual operating valves. These are not enough. We have to use sol automatic solenoid valves. Okay? Solenoid valves, electrically operated, plus gas detectors, and of course, alarm. You have to alarm because uh, uh, people must must be informed. The operating people, the maintenance people in the building, in the facility, must be made aware. And of course, the people in the area, could be patrons or their workers, office workers, and so on and so forth, must be informed through an alarm. Oh. Our present FDAS system doesn't include this. Uh, what, what is present in the fire detection and alarm system? Only uh, heat detectors and smoke detectors are provided there to detect fires. But uh, they are not provided with gas detectors. Gas that are dangerous like LPG, like hydrogen sulfide, like methane, and what else? Even ha, ha, no, uh, carbon monoxide, which is also very dangerous. No? Okay, LPG tanks should be located outdoors, just like in these two pictures. No? Uh, on the right side is uh, two tanks that were uh, tied together with a chain. So they are installed out, outside of the uh, building. So, so that in case of their of a leak, uh, the, the leak gas would just be dissipated, and because you they add ethyl mercaptan here, you will be able to smell it. Okay, here on the left picture is the rough deck of a building in a Makati, and you would see here how many tanks, five times two, there about ten tanks, ten LPG tanks, uh, in a manifold connection, no, and supplying. LPG to the restaurant at the seventh floor of the building. So you would see here a hole on the parapet wall, this one, which would allow the the ventilation in the in the roof deck of the building. The roof deck of the building is open at top, but of course, like I said, LPG is heavier than air, so you have to provide this kind of hole so that any leak gas here on the floor of the roof deck. Uh, would be dissipated by the by this hole okay and we should avoid uh, mounting your tank LPG or gas tank in an unstable mounting like this one see this is a plastic garbage bin uh, you know a, a, a plastic garbage bin is uh, you know it can just uh, uh, tilt and you know it might fall down even if you tie, tie, uh, tie it with a chain you're not even sure uh, you have to use a more stable mounting okay and according to the NFPA uh, hazardos no establish electrical area classification for outdoors stationary LPG or propane fuel station so pressure relief points above ground storage tanks remote mounted pumps dispensers and points and transfers are discussed in this NFPA 58 and electrical conduits and wiring must be installed per approved method so if you happen to have this LPG tank area or storage area you have to uh, install uh, NFPA uh, complying piping like for example uh, explosion proof installation of electricals no and of course uh, you should not allow um, smoking or any other sources of uh, flames because you, you may never know when there is a leak gas and it might cause a big explosion depending on the volume of leak gas okay and here is a uh, an L LPG tank room and you would see uh, uh, several uh, LPG tanks, several 50 kilogram tanks. This one, one, two, three, four, and there are I think 
uh, three more on this side no so that makes uh, maybe seven or even eight tanks no? here are there is a pressure regulator here and here is a gas meter of course this is the gas manifold and the piping you would see here uh, manual bulbs this one manual bulbs this one with the red handle and this one also with the red handle and this one also with the red handle but it is this solenoid bulb here on top this one this is the electrical solenoid bulb that is of importance because the moment uh, your gas detectors detect the presence of leak gas they will send automatic signal for this to operate to close the flow of gas stopping the flow of gas to your burners LPG burners gas burners or laundry burners you know so, so things like that that's the only way okay and never ever should you allow your uh, LPG bullet tank area the storage area uh, as cluttered as in this picture no violation poorly sighted LPG bullet tank with clutter around leak gas vulnerable to ignition from sources of ignition and so with this you would see a amount at near the LPG tank with uh, dead grass you know uh, not an even surface so there is the danger of uh, if there is a leak gas the leak would just uh, be staying here in the grass and waiting for an ignition okay so violation uh, LPG bullet tank with grass around leak gas vulnerable to ignition from sources of ignition like a cigarette butt that could be thrown or somebody smoking uh, or somebody uh, um, uh, do some welding works nearby so there's the danger here is a picture of a good sighted bullet tank where the the flooring the finished floor is just simply flat and uh, there is a railing steel railing that would uh, that is painted with yellow usually it's uh, should be zebra stripes and this would disallow any vehicle that would come to close it to bump the LPG tank okay and there is another one uh, instead of the the railing our bollards are provided GI pipe bollards painted also with yellow and that would make this bullet tank uh, uh, farther from being bumped okay, by vehicles. Okay, and bear in mind that uh, sleeves should be provided when piping, gas piping is done inside building. So if you have your building, you have to provide this uh, uh, gas gas slips or pipe slips the pipe slip here is the white or I mean the gray the gray pipe gray colored pipe and uh, the dark colored gray is the uh, LPG pipe okay so with here here and here and here is another example of uh, uh, pipe uh, pipe sleeving the yellow pipe is the LPG pipe, as you can see, LPG, you know. And there is the translucent plastic pipe. So uh, there is a space between the, the LPG pipe, the yellow pipe, and the and this uh, translucent pipe. So therefore, the gas would stay within the translucent pipe. And here is a. Uh, uh, an installation of course it is uh, you cannot totally make the connections of the uh, uh, sleeve pipe because you in where you locate the T's like in here there is a connection of the T then that means you cannot uh, close it no so but in here you have to install a gas detector so in case there is a leak gas there inside the the, the leak gas would come to this location and then your gas detector here will detect it and immediately so would sound an alarm and 
stop the flow of gas from the tank farm or or bullet tanks okay so in one ins installation projects that I I inspected you have I have to see the, see the um, electrical wiring installations they must be NEMA 7 or explosion proof and you see this arrow I you will see a switch inside the room which I have to uh, tell the contractor to remove it here put it outside and even this lower I have to ask the contractor to add another lower on another side of the room so that it would allow cross ventilating the the LPG tank room. Of course, if I would have been the, the designer, uh, I would not have provided an enclosure like this one. A cover, yes, maybe, meaning a roofing, but uh, the walls would just be like a cyclone uh, wire fence or, or welded, uh, or welded uh, steel, okay? Meaning to say, uh, ventilation is uh, uh, no, not a problem because the air will just be blowing in whatever direction the wind will be going. So, and there would be no uh, uh, dangerous chance where the LPG would accumulate. I mean, the, 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 there would be leak, it would accumulate, and then just waiting for an explosion. Because if you have open ventilated storage area, chances are the leak dust would just be dissipated by the, the air around it. No? And here is another situation in, in, in one project in uh, Tanawan, Batangas, years ago. Uh, just a few, one or two months after the sur surrender explosion, I had to ask the contractor and the owner to provide lovers in these doors. This room is the room for the kitchen, the big kitchen or cafeteria. So I had to ask them to provide a lover here in this door, both sides of the swing door. And there are two doors in it, one in this side and on the other side, I have to ask them to provide louvers. Louvers at the lower portion, no? So that air can be moving inside, outside, you know, and therefore ventilating uh, the inside of the kitchen. Uh, this is to make sure that there would be no uh, mixture of air that would become uh, dangerously explosive if there would be a leak gas inside the, the kitchen of the cafeteria and this was worse in the same location I was I, I asked them to remove this trench you see on both sides are the LPG, LPG burners of the cafeteria so if they have a big factory with so many employees uh, and they have these bur LPG burners still covered with plastics because it, they have not yet uh, been uh, awarded the uh, certificate of operation by the PESA at that time. So I have to uh, ask uh, the contractor and the owner to cover this trench, remove this trench. Uh, the, the, the architect told me that uh, he, he, he added this so that if they would be cleaning the inside of the cafeteria, it, the drains would be easier to clean. No? The dirty water would just come in here and would just flow out going to the drains. But the problem is there is LPG. There's the possibility that LPG may leak through the burners. You can never say when it, there's leak. And even if you have LPG gas detectors, you can never say if the LPG gas detectors will be working for the next say 15 years who knows they may they may malfunction uh, at, at some time so you know so uh, in terms of uh, providing safety anything that you uh, believe may happen you know like what Murphy what Murphy Lowe says no if you think it can happen then you have to you know, be prepared for it so the way is to remove this trench okay remove these trends as this would just be a, uh, a storage for a leak LPG gas you know? we, you'll never know because at the time the manager a British guy told me but we already have the detectors to detect it I said yeah you have it but you'll never know 
when the time comes that they may they may malfunction you know nobody knows okay so we have to protect our kitchen with uh, with uh, the best is uh, to have an agent uh, here is an example of the FM 200 of course there are about uh, some other equivalent to the FM 200 just like uh, uh, I, I forget the other two anyway they, there, are, there are other two famous brands for this no? which uh, they also use uh, inert gases like nitrogen and partly uh, carbon dioxide not monoxide uh. so uh, nitrogen because uh, the air is consists of uh, almost 80% uh, nitrogen which is an inert gas okay so with FM 200 it also has nitrogen in it no what else uh, uh, there are some other gases anyway so uh, agent you put an agent but you must have detectors also with and when the, uh, your detector will be able to uh, determine the leak gas and then you will automatically uh, release the gas to put off the fire okay like this one another picture here so different agents in the kitchen okay so now uh, uh, having told you all these uh, uh, dangerous uh, gases so we now know how to how to do it no? okay so gas piping configuration the main components of the system piping are storage vessel so uh, the storage vessel could be a small vessel to a big vessel like a bullet okay? LPG is stored at consumers premises in pressurized vessels for bulk storage systems or in a cylinders which are manifold together the design pressure of the vessel or cylinder is usually um, 200 p uh, psig no 250 psig or 1725 kilopascal bulk storage vessels may be installed in any of the following configurations number one above ground so tank is fully exposed above ground and then you have the underground tank is fully buried underground and the mounted tank where you have the the tank is fully or even partially covered uh, it's an above ground tank but it's covered with earth with with the soil okay delivery of service pipeline this line is used for delivering the LPG vapor from the storage tank to the gas appliances Okay, and then we have vaporizers are sometimes installed near the tank to vaporize the liquid LPG in the line into vapor before the first stage regulator. You know, there are uh, at least uh, two stage, uh, uh, two pressure regulators, no? the first stage and the second stage. This is used only in liquid withdrawal systems. Pressure regulators are installed along the line to reduce the vapor pressure progressively from the tank operating pressure which is uh, between 414 to 690 kilopascal or equivalent to 60 to 100 psig to appliance operating pressure of 300 mm water column of 0.5 psig this pressure reduction is normally carried out in two stages for better reliability and safety such that the gas line pressure in the building is reduced to not more than 5 psig or 35 kilopascal a systematic showing uh, typical configuration of lpg storage and piping system installed at consumers premises is shown on uh, figures later on succeeding slides pressure losses in piping system are 0.2 to 0.5 inch okay 5 to 12.7 millimeters of water column or column of water approximately 0.3 inch 7.6 mm water column as commonly used number so here are the two slides okay the first slide is a manifolded 50 kilogram tank so uh, according to this diagram there are 
two here and another two here manifolded. Sorry, let's have a short break. Later on, after the break, I will be uh, uh, reading the chart back, chat box. So if you have any questions on the, the earlier slides that we have discussed, please uh, post it in the chat box. Okay, we are back. Okay, so let's uh, proceed to the chat box. I uh, greet everyone here. Uh, of course, uh, uh, Braille, uh, Braille uh, Gehis. Hi, sir. Pwede po makaas ng slides. Yes, I answered yes already to Braille Gehis. And then, Alan J. Pantonilla, good evening, sir. Good evening. And Venice Lanosa, good evening. And uh, uh, Almar Alfante may naalala ako na project. Oh, let me see. There was one. There's another question by Al, comment by Almar. Hi, good evening, sir. Is gas farm with bullet tank allowed inside commercial building? I answered. It's too dangerous. Uh, uh, bullet tanks because of the volume. Uh, it's too dangerous, no? Um, my suggestion is a bullet tank must be installed. Uh, maybe uh, or much better if you use uh, the 50 kilogram tank. So many 50 kilograms, much better. Because chances are, if one would uh, uh, have an explosion, the the other tanks would not just be uh, affected, no? Unless of course uh, it's a it's a big fire already, but if one tank would explode, maybe the other tanks would not just be affected. But if you have a single tank like a bullet, and uh, there is a leak, and that tank will will explode, oh, it will be a very very big explosion because of the volume inside the big bullet tank. So 
Uh, my suggestion is not to use such kind of installation. You'd rather use smaller tanks. Okay? Or if there is a back space, yeah, maybe you can put it at the back, a little farther from the building, and must be provided with necessary uh, barriers no? to contain uh, the gas, uh, meaning a, 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 a firewall, maybe a firewall, okay, so that uh, in case there would be a leak, then and a fire would happen, then of course uh, it would protect people inside the building. So such kind should be. That's why we are trying to discuss this today, no? So for you to be uh, to be able to figure out what would be the best. Uh, earlier I was able to show you some samples of how not to install the LPG bullet. You've seen it, you, the one that has uh, a cluster, uh, no, cluttered area, the one with grass, you know, not clean. But the one preferred is the one with with railings and a flat surface, protected with bollards, okay? So it should be that way, okay? And you can also put it underground, so which will be much safer because, you know, uh, when you have it underground, then your only problem is the leak above ground. The, the, the tank in underneath, underneath will not be, uh, we, if there would be leak, it's only through the piping coming out, okay? Um, Almar Alfante, may naalala lang ako na project, even the designer na palipat ko sa kanya, yung gas farm, buti na lang approve kay client. So, good, Almar, you were able to uh, have it uh, corrected on time. That's good. Marlon Pascual, good evening po, Sir Will. Yes, good evening. Uh, Edgar Pay Blogs, Edgar Mbile, good evening po, Sir. Good evening. London Sisters Channel, good evening, sir. I'm just using my daughter's account. Yeah, okay. And uh, Emil Mbile, Emil V Mbile, watching and joining from Singapore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, regards to our uh, kababayans and uh, countrymen and, and colleagues there in Singapore. Good evening. Libra Boy, Edgar Mbile, good evening, Pusser Will. Yes, good evening. Resourceman Enterprises, good PM. Jerry Castro, good evening everyone from Lawag City. Oh, in Embagarabiyo, Apo, Dita, uh, Lawag. I come from Lawag. I was born there. Mike Ramsey, good evening, sir. Uh, Reman Supan, message retracted. Uh, Reman Supan, good evening, sir. Will, yes, good evening. Uh, Kent. Anilom or Molina, good evening, sir. WWJ, WJJ. Danny Dapidon, good evening, sir. Yes. Bonifacio Junior Merano, Bonifacio S. Merano from Makati City. Yes. And London Sister Channel, uh, can we install more than one gas detector in one? Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, you should not rely on only one gas detector no because if you that single gas detector will malfunction will not function then you are kaput at least two would be good no okay if you if you have so many burners at least one uh, let's say in 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 that drawing a uh, picture that i showed you in tanawan batangas they have four burners i asked them to install at least one detector per two burners side by side no so in other words there were at minimum two burners at uh, two detectors inside the room then uh rowell galinato good pm to sir good evening then uh, i'm curious that's the name of the account youtube account good evening sir and dito ako ulit curious pa rin pag engineering topic that's good i'm curious London sisters, another thing, sir. Do we do we need to open and close the gas tank after use? Ah, well, it is always uh, um, a safety uh, 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 SOP, a standard operating procedure, to close the gas tank. It's always uh, like, for example, if you are uh, using it for a restaurant and you begin to operate say for example at 10 o'clock in the morning so uh, before you start of course you're going to open it and then you're going to close it uh, maybe at 
after you finish operations at night time. Okay, but if you're just cooking it at your home, it would be best if you open it when you use and then you close it after. Th that would be the best, okay? Uh, Bonifacio Merano, thank you, okay. Okay, so now we'll, we'll go back to the PowerPoint. Thank you for your uh, questions. Let me just uh, drink my coffee. Nantok kanina Okay, wait, thank you. So now here, uh, I'd like to refer you to this um, uh, figure one. LPG manifolded cylinders storage and piping system. The original of this in the PowerPoint of Engineer Suarez was too small, so I have to expand this and uh, I have to add what I'm talking about as the way to ensure safety. You would see here some small triangle symbols. No? This red one here, this one here, and this one here. And this is the symbol I made for the gas detector. So the original presentation did not have this gas detector. So uh, I just used this triangle. Okay, So uh, you should have a detector minimum of one inside your where, is, where your burner appliance is located okay so you have here must be located there I mean it was mentioned already not more than four meters away and not more than 12 inches from the floor okay so you will have to protect that that one if it is a multi burner uh, and they are far away uh, the maximum distance would be uh, four meters away so in other words if the if the devices are located every five meet or five meters away then you must have a automatically two detectors okay and then outside where your incoming line is is uh, installed so meaning to say you have there a gas meter you have there a, uh, a meter valve here and, uh, and a gauge pressure gauge and the stage 2 regulator and a service valve my suggestion is also to have one detector okay and from the source in your tank farm in your uh, tank room or tank uh, storage room okay you would see he here there are two cylinder tanks here on this side and another two cylinders on this side together they are provided with manifold and uh, Bulbs, okay. This one, this gate bulb, this gate bulb, this, and this is a main gate bulb, and it supplies now to your first isolation valve going to the to the first stage reg regulator. So this is the first stage regulator, and now you have here this symbol. It was originally ESV, so it they you they mean emergency solenoid emergency shut off valve i have to change it with electric solenoid valve so it is a valve that can function remotely automatically okay so uh, this is the valve that will be shut down by uh, the by the detection of gases by this uh, by any of these gas detectors okay so again there is a gauge here because this is the the first stage um, uh, regulation pressure regulation so you will have to know what is the pressure okay so take note the pressure in this side would be between 414 to 690 kilopascal and then after the first first stage regulation the pressure uh, pressure will become 35 kilopascal or uh, 5 psi so something like uh, yeah 5 5 psi okay and then it will now it is now moving here uh, underground it is and the assumption that uh, yeah, there is traffic also in the park in the area then you have here the service valve the second stage regulation and the pressure gauge a meter valve Okay, and a, the gas meter. So you have again the gas detector here. And inside your kitchen or uh, your uh, 
house or building or whatever, you must have this third gas detector. So that's how we should protect our system piping. Okay? That's how we protect our system piping. And of course, it must, this uh, location of the tanks must be fully ventilated also. Take note that the wiring to the solenoid valve should be explosion proof because uh, it is difficult if there would be leak gas and your wiring uh, will incur some short circuit or what and therefore that might cause even explosion no and mark it must be marked with no smoking uh, dan and danger sign of presence of flammable gases warning uh, LPG gases very flammable something like that so to warn people around that there's the presence of this okay so that's how we do it with using manifolded cylinders and here is when you use the bullet tank uh, you see here the bullet tank same the pressure is about 414 to 690 kilopascals and you would see here an incoming line so this is where the LPG tanker from maybe from Petron, Shell or Caltex or Total will come to uh, supply your uh, LPG to your bullet tank. So here you have a, a gate valve and here another gate valve for the filling line and then you now have here the withdrawal line. Uh, another gate valve and then now you have the isolation valve here and the first stage regulation and now again the electric solenoid valve here the electric solenoid valve then a gauge then a main valve of course my suggestion is to locate here in this area this side your first gas detector then underground line to traverse your parking area maybe or what then you have now the service valve same as before the second state regulation now bringing down the pressure to uh, point, point five, point five. because here is very high and then here is uh, 5 psi and here is 0.5 psi going to your appliance so you have the gas meter the gas cap here and again that detector so again there are three detectors one at the tank farm area tank storage area and the other one is just before it enters and the third is now the uh, gas cap area in some areas they do not like to put uh, detectors in the tank farm tank farm area and in the before it enters no but uh, this is the only way to assure that uh, any leak gas could be immediately be uh, known no you can it will activate automatically an alarm to inform the maintenance people the operating people and uh, uh, humans uh, within within the area okay so can can we go to the chat box and let us see if you have some uh, questions regarding the piping installation Okay, here is one question from Bonifacio Merano. Uh, if your bullet tank is located outside, is it also mandatory to install gas detectors or, or is it option of the owner? So again, uh, in, in most that I've seen, they do not install. No? But in my experience, I... I strongly recommend the installation of detectors in the tank, pump, tank farm area as well as going inside and not only inside the, the kitchen or where your appliances. No? This is to ensure that uh, there is this, uh, uh, especially if, you, if they're using bullet. If you're using bullet, chances are the gas is not provided with ethyl mercaptan. That was the problem in the Serendra. Because it was a bullet tank, it was bulk gas, uh, they did not add ethyl mercaptan to the gas and that, for, that made the gas 
uh, difficult to uh, uh, to uh, to notice notice that there is a leak gas. No, at the sixth floor of the Serendra, the person who went up was not able to notice that there was that the room and the sixth floor was already full of leak LPG gas. That's a problem. So it is that that's that's uh, be, it is better if you use the small tank. The, the 11 kilogram, the small one, and the, the 50 kilograms. At least there is the smell of gas provided. No? Okay, so let's continue on. Here is a uh, picture of a mounted uh, tank, meaning to say you have the bullet tanks there and they are covered with soil uh, and, and uh, properly landscaped. Manicured. Of course, there's the the head portion of the tank where the pipes are connected. You will notice that uh, there is a firewall constructed here. There's this firewall. Okay, so therefore, this portion uh, would be the possible source of the leak. In this location, you should have the detectors provided, and you must have a uh, uh, spray facilities water spray facilities fire protection facilities so that in case there is a fire uh, you, uh, the spray facilities would automatically uh, put up the fire okay so even agent system would be would be also good to be provided okay to suppress any presence of course but the number one would be the presence of uh, gas detectors as well as the electric sol solenoid valve okay so if you have the tanks you would usually have see like these ones you would see here uh, vertical pipes no? and these are the the vent pipes the vent pipes are uh, you need this to uh, be provided going through the air uh, in order to allow the the, uh, the venting of the hydrogen sulfide okay so uh, because you know, like I mentioned earlier, the hydrogen sulfide is a highly, uh, is a flammable as well as highly toxic gas. So it must be ventilated to the air. You, you see this in those gasoline stations. When you go to the gasoline stations, just notice the pipe, the pipes, vertical pipes that are installed like uh, this one. Okay. And here is just a typical uh, uh, installation of uh, a, a tank cage area, cylinder tanks area, where it's just open, open walls inside only with a cover. So that's okay because it will allow the cross ventilating the area. No? Of course, here I put I put again a symbol for the gas detector, as well as a gas detector inside the building or room here on the right side. Here is just a typical LPG piping layout of a restaurant. Uh, you would see here the pipes running, and here, okay. So, uh, and here is another uh, sample of uh, piping. Sample of LPG piping isometric. Uh, it's almost complete with details. As you would see, there, there, there. Uh, there are the diameters here you would see 13 mm this is 20 mm so about 3 fourths pipe 13 mm and then there is 32 mm here and there is also 50 mm here what else here is uh, 25 mm 25 mm 13 mm 32 mm 20 mm and here main main line is 40 mm meaning to say 40 mm is one and a half inch diameter pipe 32 is one and one fourth inch pipe and uh, the 25 is the one inch and the 20 is the three fourths and the and the 13 is the the 13 mm here is the one half inch pipe okay 
So this uh, isometric uh, diagram is uh, typical for a food court area where around it are the cuisine, are the kitchen here. And in the middle usually are the, the dining area where uh, you already have there the, the burners. Okay. Okay, so these are the tank cylinder capacity. So we have the uh, 11 uh, kilogram tank with 5 kilograms and of course uh, the 50 kilogram usually something something here 44.5 and then there are the, the bigger tanks okay pressure regulation pressure regulators are installed for reducing the gas delivery pressure before reaching the appliances high pressure regulator or first stage uh, regulator is installed at the LPG storage container outlet line for reducing the tank pressure of about uh, 550 kilopascal or 80 psig to 35 kilopascal or 5 psig or less before entering the building low pressure or second stage regulator is installed downstream of the first stage regulator to reduce the 35 kilopascal or 5 psig pressure to 300 mm water column or 0.5 kalate one half psig outlet pressure which is the normal operating pressure of lpg appliances preferably regulators should be installed outdoors for safety reasons when this is not possible regulators installed inside building should be vented to the outside air except venting is not necessary for regulators with over pressure shut off with higher 20 percent higher setting okay with built-in vent limiting device so here is a uh, a typical uh, uh, schematic or, or, or blow up picture of a low or a pressure regulator device and uh, in this picture on the left side you would see here the red one as the uh, pressure regulator and this one is the gas meter and down pipe consumption point here the copper pipe and the supply line here in the upper portion on the right side are the connection of the uh, rubber hoses or pigtail uh, my I, I have a comment here the, the length of the pigtails or the hoses are very long so it's not a, uh, a safety installation to have very long of this the length of these uh, rubber hoses was just just long enough just enough for you to be able to uh, install, connect the hose to the uh, to the cylinder nozzle, and also to remove. So not not very long because you know if it is very long, chances are uh, the length of uh, the hose would be possible sources of damage, and you might have a problem. And here you would see green green colored cylinders uh, installed and only these two on the right side have uh, a chain together no the correct way is to provide a a railing here so as not to allow the or if there is a an earthquake or a tremor they would be prevented from falling down so here on the right side is a uh, with an enclosure to protect them from falling down but the problem here is the owner installed a clutter in it no, by putting unnecessary materials in the containment of course he provided here an open bottom uh, the, the gate to allow if there is leakage the gas would just be dissipated 
And then you would notice there is another violation here below. There is a trend here that makes it uh, a, a violation. Okay. In other words, when there is a leak gas here, the gas would just stay in the trench waiting for an ignition or a spark. Okay, so that's uh, that's uh, not good. And here is a almost complete system. Let us review it. Here you have a uh, um, blue pipeline liquid LPG. So the, the blue pipeline is the liquid LPG. And then the yellow pipeline is now the vapor. That means there is a, uh, uh, a vaporizer provided here. And then the next is, uh, of course, there's the pigtail here. Uh, pigtail, so quite long. And the cabinet cover, of course, uh, open below. So there is uh, there the opening below. Okay, so now here is the auto change over valve. So there is uh, a shut off valve here. And there is now the regulator here. Here, there's the regulator. Then there is another shut off valve here, okay, and we have the vaporizer, vaporizer here, and the regulator, okay, and an over pressure protection device here. Of course, there's the bypass, you no, know? and then here is the knockout pot. The knockout pot is one that would uh, remove the impurities inside the the line. Okay, so it's just like a drain valve. Okay, and then here is the emergency shut off valve. So this should be uh, one of these should be provided uh, the the electrical solenoid valve. And then here is a fire extinguisher. So, readily available in case there is a, a fire. No? So, what is not included here is a gas detector. So, that it would automatically uh, uh, stop no? any, uh, any leakage. Okay? Here is here our uh, installation of manifolded gas lines. And so, with here on the right side. Now the knockout pot, this one, this yellow big, big cylinder, no, not really very big. The purpose is to filter off, collect heavy ends or particles or residue or impurities inside or in the LPG gas, no. So, you know, if you have impurities, it might affect the burning in the burner, no. When the impurities block the the the, 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 the flow of the gas in the burner then you sometimes the the fire would shut off uh, open and close and open and close so you know it's not good sometimes it, you will create a sudden big uh, burn burner no burner fire requirements at least two drain valves drain shall end at the ground level and plug at the end okay drain valve open position valve parallel to the pipe Okay, then drain valve close position well 90 degrees so this one so it is in parallel so it is what it is in the open if it is in the vertical then it is in the 90 degrees okay vaporizers purpose is to convert the liquid LPG into gaseous state requirements shall not be installed inside the building okay then shall not be installed inside steel cabinet or within the same housing of the lpg cylinders so it must be outside then wall mounted vaporizers shall be at least 1.8 meters above the ground okay take note uh vaporator shall be at least 1.8 meters above the ground so it must they must be outside outside the building outside the tanks and must be 1.8 meters above the ground here is another uh, drawing of an installation and here another uh, 
distillation of evaporizer here, evaporizer outlet, this portion. Okay. Emergency shot of valve. Purpose, a shot of valve that provides for remote means of shutting off the gas supply in case of emergency. Requirements, installed after the knockout path, uh, linked to a release mechanism so that the valve can be closed from a safe distance from the edge of the installation. Proper and complete installation, proper labeling of emergency shot of valve, valve box. So here, what is not included in here is the mentioning of the electrical solenoid valve. Okay, pressure regulation. I think we already discussed this. A piping system must have at least two acceptable devices, a line pressure regulator plus one other device. It's limiting the pressure to a value that does not exceed the maximum working pressure of the downstream system, both of which must, uh, must fail simultaneously in order to uh, avoid an overpressure, must not fail, no? uh, downstream. It is therefore mandatory to have built-in pressure relief devices in the second or final stage regulator, regulator to protect the appliances from excessive pressures. Pressure relieving and pressure limiting devices should be set so that uh, the pressure should not exceed a safe level beyond the maximum allowable working pressure for the piping appliances connected. Useful design guide tables. So here uh, are included the gas demand determination. The volume of gas accounted for should be determined from either the manufacturer's input rating, gas supplier, equivalent uh, manufacturer, or competent personnel. Estimation and equipment rating is as shown below in table. Two. Approximate gas input. Okay, we have uh, like here barbecue residential domestic clothes dryer domestic gas range domestic recess oven section gas uh, re refrigerator um, storage water heater up to 30 gallons tank. so on the right side you have the barbecue residential 50,000 BTU there are no then domestic clothes dryer 35,000 uh, domestic gas range is uh, high, 65,000 BTU per hour. And then recessed oven, 25,000. Gas refrigerator, if there is, 3,000. Storage water heater, 30,000. Okay, so here, gas use factors for apartments. So if you're supplying for multi-family units here are the demand factors allowable demand factors and here are the gas demand determination for uh, different applications here like uh, residential and then commercial okay so uh, you would you would see here the different values and the different input in uh, uh, BTU per hour and here is uh, approximate gas demand for common appliances like uh, broiler 30,000 let's have another one closed dryer 35,000 uh, what else Coffee maker, 18,000. Barbecue, 50,000. So, okay, just refer to this for a standard uh, gas demand. Then here, pressure loss, uh, 2 PSI loss, and so on in a different size of piping okay here you have uh, the length of piping 
Say for example, if you have uh, uh, feet or 10 feet, let's say 10 feet piping, if you use uh, one half inch diameter pipe, then it would be 131 uh, uh, psi is the is the pressure loss, no? So big pressure loss. So so you have to use a larger pipe, like 40 mm. So it's only 62. 62. Okay. I'm sorry, sorry. If you use uh, one and a half, okay, one and a half at ten. Okay, so here cubic feet of gas per hour. So here, cubic feet for gas. Pipe in inches is one and a half. Okay, so that's how uh, this uh, table. Uh, this table gives us these values of pressure. Uh, less uh, than 2 psi number of outlets and it is also the the factor when you have uh, how many outlets gas outlets that's what it means no? 1 to 8 100 percent 9 to 16 90 percent 17 to 29 outlets 80 percent and so on as the, the number of outlets increases then the percent use factor is decreasing also and here is an, another one again uh, pressure loss 2 psi 7.7 the 7 table and here is a table 7 that's 8 or 7 that's yeah correct pressure of 5 psi loss of 10 percent so here are the values and uh, I try to blow this up so to make it clear. Eh? And seven does nine pressure ten psi loss of ten percent. So okay, another one and uh, here is uh, another one no liquid propane gas pipe sizing chart. So uh, pipe size in inches, one half, three quarts, one, one and one quart, one and a half, and it is the uh, the volume. Okay. Length in pipe in feet. So if you have uh, a um, twenty feet length of pipe or one and a half. So the here the volume of gas flow is uh, in BTU per hour. One cubic foot of LPG gas is 2516 BTU. That is. Here are the fittings, the different fittings here. 45 L, 90 degrees L elbow, 45 elbow, 90 elbow, 180 return uh, bands, T's, and so on. Then here you have the valves and uh, fittings. Okay, now we go to piping materials. Uh, the most common material used for gas piping is metallic or metal pipe. This consists of steel, iron, copper, brass, and aluminum. In the Philippines, uh, the most common is the steel, like the BI pipe. Okay. How about uh, GI pipe? Is it uh, popular here in the Philippines? Well, the BI pipe is uh, much better because there is a problem with the GI pipe. Uh, the GI pipe has, uh, yeah, the local GI pipe in the country, the, the coating, the galvanized uh, coating is not so thick. And so sometimes inside the, the line, no? So that's the big problem with the gas pipe, uh, with the GI pipe. Okay. Pipe and tubing. Pipe and tubing are common terms in gas systems. Pipe is defined as the rigid conduit of iron, steel, copper, and brass. Why do why do we not use copper? Well, because copper is expensive together with brass. No? Copper and brass. Of 
course, uh, they would be good because uh, they are very strong materials, no? Okay. About aluminum. Well, aluminum is also okay, but okay, like I said, it's uh, much more expensive than steel. Okay. Usually, aluminum is about three to four times more expensive than steel pipes. Much more with copper. It's more about uh, almost eight to ten times more expensive than steel pipes. Pipe is defined as a rigid conduit of iron, steel, copper, brass, or plastic. Yeah, plastic. Plastic is already being used in fire, fire protection. Tubing is defined as a semi-rigid conduit of copper, aluminum, plastic, or steel. For the purpose of simplifying the code, the term pipe is used to describe both pipe and tubing in a system. And the permissible joints listed, only those listed for pipe shall be used, and pipes and those listed in tubing shall be used for tubing. Metallic pipe, black iron, hot dip galvanized iron, gas piping must be standard weight, schedule 40, minimum of listed materials. This type of piping can be used for all type of fuel gases and is approved for interior, exterior, or underground use. Other metals approved for fuel gas piping include copper, brass, and aluminum. Copper and brass are approved for interior and exterior or underground use. It is important to remember to use copper and brass only where gas contains less than an average 0.3 grains of hydrogen sulfide per 1000 SCF. Huh? Amounts greater than this can cause scaling or uh, deterioration of the pipe. Nearly all gas delivered to customers Today contain hydrogen sulfide levels far below this amount. Because of its nature, aluminum pipe is approved only for for use indoors. Okay, tubing is made of the same materials as piping. Seamless pa copper and aluminum alloy tubing can be used with non-corrosive gases. Aluminum tubing cannot be I uh, cannot, is not approved for underground or exterior use. The newest metallic piping for fuel gas system is the corru corrugated stainless steel tubing, CSST. This type is publicly becoming the product used by more installers because of, of the ease of installation. The corrugated steel tubing is covered with a vinyl coating to make the pipe move smoothly through penetrations in the wall and floor joists. Connections are made with special self-flaring materials. Sizing and installation follow the same requirements as other materials but the main difference with this product is you must be certified by the piping manufacturer to install CSST. Okay, plastic piping Plastic piping, gas piping is uh, made of polyethylene material. This is the same material used to manufacture PEX plumbing piping. Uh, because of the nature of this product, it is only approved for exterior underground. Because of its cost and flexibility, this product is, is mainly used as gas mains and supply line by the local gas suppliers. It can be installed as part of the customer's piping system, but is limited to supplying gas to outdoor grills and lighting fixtures. All piping used in fuel gas systems must be tested and comply with the appropriate standards. Listed below are piping materials and the correct listed standards. So for materials, we have these standards. And see as me and so on, no? Okay. And uh, here is a complete picture of the standards. Let's have a short break again. We will uh, go back to the chat box after our break.
Okay, we are back. Uh, let's visit the chat box. Okay, Dante the Piton, sir, which standard are you referring to for making this design? Uh, these are American standards. Bonifacio Merano, can we recommend uh, steel braided hose instead of rubber hose for the LPG appliance user? Yes, of course. Usually they are, they are uh, armored type. Meaning to say, is provided with the uh, uh, the mechanical protection, no, to make it stronger. Then, uh, Dante the Piton, is there any other alternative material instead of rubber hose for long term use? Yeah, that's it. So it it must be with uh, with uh, armor protection. No? Vani, Giovanni, Giovanni, Takatak, good evening, Sir Will. And to everyone, then Bonnie, Merano, Dante, and Donitz, the same from Cebu. Dani and Donitz, the same from Cebu. Mirasul Villa, good evening. Uh, Puzerwil, hello sa lahat. Then uh, Bonifacio Merano, thanks should also have sunshade to protect from direct sunlight. Yeah, cover, yes, correct. Jimmy Alvarez is signed. Then Dante the Piton again. Mr. Booney, I'm from Mindanao, somewhere in Lano del Norte, sir. Ah, okay. Then uh, Bonifacio Merano, I know Donitz the Piton from Cebu. Ah, okay. <laughs> Bonifacio Merano, thank you, Mr. Dante. Dante the Piton, what is the specific type of material used for the piping line? So, uh, my recommendation is uh, BI pipe black iron pipe it's made of mild steel schedule 40 because uh, I do not recommend the GI pipe because like I said sometimes the, the galvanized coating uh, uh, which is in, in, the, in the Philippines is, is substandard no the, the thickness of this galvanized uh, coating or uh, yeah is is uh, not enough sometimes it's it is being it, it is the scale no so that's uh, the problem okay then london sisters channel my name is rowell london oh so <laughs> sorry rowell rowell so london sister uh rowell london alan j pantonilla sir nakaka nakaka sa what is this i cannot understand uh Alan J. Uh, naka, nakas, nas, nakaskil, kaipe, uh, anyway. Jervi Areglo, good evening po sa lahat. Thank you, Jervi. Okay, so let's proceed. Anyway, you know, uh, you know, LPG piping really is a very specialized field and not so many people are, uh, have the experience in this. But I think with these uh, references being provided, uh, initially by uh, engineer Henry Suarez and I added some uh, uh, provisions for safety I think it's already a big uh, a big uh, a capacity building for every one of you who will be pursuing to do gas piping okay so let's proceed joints and fittings metallic piping fittings the code places many different restrictions in piping materials fittings and joints and piping system. The following are just some of the restrictions. It is always best to refer to the gas code when installing a system. Brass, bronze, or copper fittings. Fittings, if exposed to soil, shall have a minimum 80% copper content. Copper alloy fitting generally have 60%. So that is if you are using brass. Brass, bronze, and copper fittings. Next, aluminum alloy fittings. Threads sh shall not form the joint 
seal, no? And zinc, aluminum, alloy fittings, fittings shall not be used in systems containing flammable gas air mixtures. So, so there are so many uh, uh, disal uh, disallowance, no? Okay, special fittings. Fittings such as couplings, proprietary type joints, saddle tees, gland type compression fittings, flared, flareless, or compression type tubing fitting shall be permitted to be used provided that they are used within the fittings uh, manufacturers pressure temperature recommendations used within the service conditions anticipated with respect to vibration fatigue thermal expansion or contraction installed or or braced to prevent separation from the joint by gas pressure or external physical damage and approved. So, you know, when you use this brass, aluminum, and so on, there are so many uh, need things to be uh, uh, observed or considered, followed. No? Plastic piping. In plastic piping, joints and fittings, plastic pipe tubing and fittings shall be joined in accordance with the manufacturer's instructions. Such joints shall comply with the following. The joint shall be designed and installed so that the longitudinal pull-out resistance of the joint will be at least equal to the tensile strength of the plastic piping material. Heat fusion joints shall be made in accordance with qualified procedures. This is the plastic welding. Uh, plastic welding. Uh, that have been established and proven by test to produce gas-type joints at least as strong as the pipe or tubing being joined. Joints shall be made with joining method recommended by the pipe manufacturer. Heat fusion fitting shall be marked ASTM D2513. Uh, plastic pipe joints further, where compression type mechanical joints are used, the gasket material in the fitting shall be compatible with the plastic piping and with the gas distributed by the system. And in, an internal tubular rigid stiffener shall be used in conjunction with the fitting. The stiffener shall be flushed with the end pipe or tubing and shall extend at least to the outside end of the pipe or tubing. Okay, and so on. No? Plastic piping joints and fittings for use in liquefied petroleum gas piping system shall be in accordance with NFPA 58. Okay, so pipe sizing methods. Longest length method is uh, uh, the more popular. The pipe size of each section of gas piping shall be determined using longest length of piping from the point of delivery to the remote outlet and the load of the section. Then branch length method, pipe size of each section of the longest pipe run from the joint point of delivery to the uh, most remote outlet shall be determined using the longest run of piping and the load of the section. The pipe size of each section of branch piping not previously sized shall be determined using the length of the piping from the point of delivery to the most remote outlet in each branch and the load of the section. Hybrid pressure. The pipe size for each section of higher pressure gas piping shall be determined using the longest length of piping. From the point of delivery to the to the most line pressure regulator, the pipe size shall f uh, f form the line pressure regulator to each outlet shall be determined using the length of piping from the regulator to the most uh, to the farthest outlet served by the regulator. So the general formula for sizing: low pressure gas formula, less than 1.5 psi. Okay. D is equal to Q raised to the 0 
divided by 19.7 times delta H over CR XL raised to 0.206. So he, D is the diameter of the pipe. Q is the uh, input rate of appliance. Cubic feet per hour at six, 60 degrees Fahrenheit or 16 degrees centigrade. And 30 inch mercury column. L is the length, equivalent length of pipe in feet, and delta H is the ratio drop in water, 27.7 uh, inch water equals 1 psi. Then here at the pressure, uh, higher pressure side, high pressure gas formula, more than 1.5 psi. Okay, so D is equal to Q raised to 0.381 divided by 18.93 P1 minus P2 or I mean P1 square minus P2 square times Y divided by CRXL raised to 0 0.206 so it's an, it is an empirical formula which uh, might have been determined only by experiments okay by experiments Okay, so D is equal to the inside diameter of the pipe. Q is the input rate of the appliance, cubic feet per hour at uh, 60 degrees uh, Fahrenheit and 30 inch mercury column. L is equivalent length, P1 upstream pressure, P2 downstream pressure. Then uh, uh, P2 plus 14.7. In one here is P1 uh, plus 14.7. 14.7 PSI is the pressure, atmospheric pressure. CR is equal to uh, 1.2462 and Y is 0 0.9910. Here is the calculation form sample. Project, location, owner, designed by, sample problem, date, check, date, and here main, branch, gas demand in cubic feet per hour, pipe size inside, straight run, fittings, kind of straight run, then quantity equivalent length, total length. Okay, pipe sizing procedures determine the gas demand of the appliances from the manufacturer's data or from estimating guides and tables. Measure the length from the point of discharge or the source to the remotest outlet. From table 7 to 6 above, select the length which is equal to or to greater than the, the measured length. The size of all the sections shall be determined using the same row in table as determined in item 3. 5. Starting from the remotest section, select the size pipe which corresponds to the amount of LPG required by appliance. 6. A sizing of pipe progress towards the main pipe, all gas demands of appliances should be considered. And seven, repeat the procedure until the main pipe has been sized. So here is the sample problem. Uh, here is the incoming line. Okay. So point A, here is point B, and then uh, point J, uh, node I, point C, D, uh, E, then this is F, G, H, I, J. Okay, so you would see here the lens, 10 feet, 30 feet, this one is 5 feet, 5 feet, then 5 feet again. So you would see here 1 inch, 5 uh, feet, 4 feet here, here is 5 feet and 1 feet here, and so on and so forth. No? From the sample problem above calculate the total length from the remotest outlet to the point of supply. From A to F is equal to F to E, D to E, C to D, B, C, A, B. So let's go back to it. So, A to F is equal to A to E, E to D, D to C, C to 
B and then of course to A. So okay. So six, five, 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 and four equals sixty one feet. Okay. Since there are two elbows and one T fittings encountered, compute the equivalent length of these fittings by considering five feet per fitting irrespective of pipe sizes. So A to F is equal to 61 plus 3 times 5 to 76 feet. From table 7 to 6, under column length in feet, select 80 feet. Fill this in the calculation form. Okay, so this is the figure, 80 feet. So... So A to F, total run of 61, total length including the equivalent of the valuation of the elbow, okay. so 3 times 5 is 15, 15 plus 61 is equal 76 feet. Okay, so, uh, from F to E. Now from the remotest outlet E to F, take the amount of LPG requirements which is 25 BTU per hour for LPG application. Use 248 cubic feet per BTU to compute for uh, cubic feet per hour and determine the pipe size. So 25,000 over 25, see, use 25 for convenience equal to 10 then in in the row of 80 the closest value is 42 cfh which is minimum value and pipe size going up is one half so let's go back to the table no so in the 80 the closest for one half is 42 this one all okay. right 42 and one half okay. now uh, there are 42 Okay, the media, 42. Okay, so, so one half, one half cubic feet per hour, then, then sample problem size, moving backward, DE, the gas demand for outlet F and G shall be D to E is equal to e, EG and EF. Let's go back to the diagram. Under EG plus EF, EG plus EF, EG here, EG and EF. Okay, so EG and EF. So let's go back. EG and EF, fifty thousand plus twenty-five thousand equals seventy-five thousand. Then therefore D2E 75,000 divided by 25 is 30 cubic feet per hour. Table 7 the seek in the row 80 feet, the 30 CFH is still within the 42 CFH capacity of one half pipe. Okay. So still the same. Then what's the next? Now the next one is the C to D. So C to D equals DH plus EG plus EF equivalent to 120,000 over 2,500 is 48 CF, CFH. 48 CFH is definitely larger than the table in 42 for one half inch pipe. The next pipe size is 3 fourths. It's now selected with the value of 89 CFH. So let's see. So here. So three fourths 89 okay. so just do this until you'll be able to complete successively the computation up to the last now this is now the la last uh, branch no? or, or node no? from A to B A to B okay. 215,000 divided 25 86 FH so let us see the so eight 
P9 also can also use 1 inch so in this case it could be 3 fourths you may use 3 fourths or you can use 1 inch okay yeah so if it is 3 fourths pasok pa rin so 3 fourths for AB so uh, remember it's A to F so now we have A to F here no? so you have uh, D, E, C, D, B, C and AB almost, almost complete the, its branch is now sized as follows E to G is 50 over 25 20 CFH D to H 45,000 over 25 18 CFH okay C uh, this should be the uh, C to D no? this should be D sorry C to D 30,000 over 25 12 CFH and then B to J 65 uh, 1000 over 25 the, the branches shall be one half 5 size as per 7 to 6 there yeah. so the branches are here ok so same here now you have uh, we have added uh, the different uh, branches one half, one half, one half, one half. Okay. To determine the storage capacity of LPG, a seven day refilling or tank replacement should be adopted. Rule of thumb per sample problem, total gas de uh, demand for 100% uh, simultaneous outlet use shall be. LPG demand equals 86,000 times 25 equals 215,000 BTU per hour. Since LPG, 50 kilogram LPG cylinder has an evaporative capacity of uh, 100,000 BTU R. Now, number of LPG tanks used 215 over 100 or 2.15. So, okay. 3. 3 LPG tanks. And the sample above tightening can be used using the formula. So, and uh, these are all the, the lines B, C, C, D, D, E, 3 fourths, 3 fourths, 50 mm. Branch line E, G, D, H, C, I, B, J, 0.5 or the media. Okay, so here is just a typical isometric we've shown before. Uh, and here is another one that I've uh, we've done uh, last year for a, uh, uh, a restaurant. Just uh, do the the isometric piping. Now we proceed with the inspection, testing, and commissioning scope. So just. Uh, in your free time you're going to just uh, read this I tried to blow, blow up the the letters the alphanumeric uh, letters so that it could be readable because the original slide is not so clear okay so just uh, when you are doing your design, you go over reading this so that you will be guided. Okay, LPG meter, gas piping. Oh, let, let's go back and start. You have scope, then materials, pipes and fittings, uh, flexible hose. Let me go back. Our subject to full tank pressure must be designed to a minimum working pressure of 350 PSI. The hoses must be resistant to LPG action, reinforced tight, and should be adequately creamed at S. Pressure regulator, LPG meter, gas piping installation, leak testing, uh, soap test is uh, the best to determine the, the leaks. 
piping insulation subjected to full tank pressure. Test pressure should be about 1.5 times the normal working pressure. So, you know, in, in some other testing, it is twice the operating pressure. But in here, we only test it at 1.5. Piping insulation after one in 500 mm inches of water column. Test pressure is 2.5 times. Piping insulation for 20 inches. Test pressure should be 5 times the maximum expected operating pressure with minimum of 5 PSIG. Location of leaks should be found by the use of soap of so use of soap and water. Soap suds. No? no naked flames used in checking the leakage. Defective pipes and fitting must be repaired and replaced. Use nitrogen for pneumatic testing. Okay. Safety, individual tenant, customer. Using LPG product is required to install automatic safety device which is automatically shut off the supply of gas by means. Okay. Electric gas detection, EPG leak within the area, fire suppression system in case of fire. Commissioning, the piping shall be purged of nitrogen up to the appliances with LPG vapor and further tested for leaks. Okay. Soapy water solution for uh, locating the leaks. And here is just a, a testing an underground tank. You will see here the line to test with pressure gauges. Typical uh, tanks. Okay. Example of sediment traps. And uh, provision of sleeves. Take note of this provision of sleeves here. That's it. So we are through. Let's go back to the um, to the chat box. Let me just go back there to the front slide. starting at the bottom Mike Ramsey and and also sir what is the effective height of the from the floor when installing gas leak detectors maximum 12 inches Mike Mike Ramsey Alan J Pantonilla sir need din po ba naka slope yung pipe for you no 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 not not like plumbing na naka slope uh, just run it on on uh, uh, horizontal and vertical lines or, or diagonals if you want it if uh, Russell Kantai good evening sir I'm late sobrang traffic hahabol na lang ako you, anyway Russell you can always go back after it is uploaded I will try to uh, post it on my Facebook so you can still catch it up then Mike Ramsey hi sir Low, how about installing seismic sensor protection and LPG pipes yes why not especially if your installation are uh, quite big okay uh, inside big establishments uh, it might be good no but of course you have to be uh, wh when you do it using uh, steel no because steel is uh, one of the strongest material that we have uh, steel is the one of the strongest it is uh, it, it has a greater tensile and compressive strength than copper than aluminum okay remember that uh, steel is a greater strength compressive as well as tensile strength than copper or aluminum so steel when you use steel it is already um, what you call this uh, uh, tremor uh, or earthquake proof no? except if you have if you have some uh, fittings that are not welded so that is where probably the problem is no uh, but if they were really tested for uh, um, uh, pressure test 
and then you have the gas detectors in there to because the, the it is the gas detector that will that are your sentinel your guards and to determine the leaks okay Vince Lanosa thank you sir can I ask for a clear PDF file yes we'll do it Alan J. Pantonilla salamat uh -huh. Uh -huh. Let me see uh, some of them. Mike Ramsey and also, sir, what is the effective height of the IO? Uh, I've answered that already. Uh, Bonnie Merano, can I ask for it? Clear? Okay, finish already. Russell Kantai, good evening. I'm late. Uh -huh. Tapos na yan. Uh, Mike Ramsey, how about installing seismic? Yes, I answered it. JB Arreglo, good evening po sa lahat. Thank you, sir. Will. Uh, uh, ah, okay, so yung tinatanong mo, Alan J, is naka-slope. Is that right? Okay. Okay, let's see again. Okay, so that's it. I think uh, uh, any one of you wants to uh, uh, ask more questions, I'm, give you, I'm giving you a maximum of three minutes. Please... Uh, um, ask your questions within the three minutes time and for those of you who want to get uh, certificates in case you just uh, send your request by email to my uh, email addresses wiljjuan.engr at gmail.com or the other one I, I will uh, put it in the chat, no? Let me see. Let me put it. I think it's... I already posted it at the top top portion. Yeah, I, I think so, no? Yeah. I already posted it at the top portion, no? So, please just take note of those of you who may want to... Uh, uh, see that okay any more questions uh, gentlemen Jerry Castro thank you sir will work a webinar what's our next topic I I, I, I will check I, I, I can I cannot uh, I didn't memorize the what is uh, is scheduled uh, you just visit the Marvelous Solar page, Marvelous Solar, and you will see what is scheduled on Wednesday. Uh, Bonifacio Mer Merano, how about copper pipe? Do you recommend it to use as underground piping? Uh, usually, I do not like to recommend copper. First, it is uh, an expensive pipe, a material. It is an expensive material. That's number one. Although it is plenty in our country, but uh, you know, in other countries, countries like Canada and America, they they use this copper pipe um, uh, very much. No, but but in our country, where like I said, there is the the earthquake, you know, and so on. So we use BI black iron pipe. Schedule forty is good enough for LPG. It's much cheaper. It's much cheaper than copper. Very, very very much cheaper as well as it is of higher strength tensile as well as compressive strength okay so safe ka na mura pa okay? of course there is a need for maintaining it but you know if you already provide for uh, good good paint finish it will last very long already uh, Bonifacio uh, what is your Facebook, sir? Uh, my name, uh, William Jacinto Juan. Uh, there are two of that, or better in, uh, I also have the other one. W J J U A N P E R M P. That's other. Uh, that's my other account. And Roel Galinato, as per code, po. Ano prefer po? Well, dead. Welded or threaded connection. Of course, welded is still the best because of uh, because of uh, the 
the strength of the welding is much much greater than just having the welded okay and what else sir which is more prefer weld type or threaded in connection so i answered that already welded is much preferred welded is much preferred okay uh, i answered that already uh, Roel. okay so in the meantime i'd like to greet everyone who joined us from the top uh, Brile Jenis and Alan Pantonilla, Vince Lanosa, Almar Alfante, and uh, Marlon Pascual, um, Edgar P. Blogs, London, uh, I forget the name again of uh, London, anyway, uh, Emil and Bile, Libra Boy. And uh, Resource Man Enterprises, uh, Jerry Castro, Mike Ramsey, Reman Sopan, Kent Anilom Molina, uh, Dante Dapiton, Bonifacio uh, Mero, uh, Merano Jr., and uh, Roel Galinato. I'm curious. And uh, who else? Dante Dapiton, Boni, Fascio. Vani Tagatak, Mirasol Villa, Manifashi Mirano again, Jimmy Alvarez, uh, then let's see, Alan J. Pantumilla, Jerby Arreglo, Mike Ramsey, Rosel Cantay, Vince Lanosa again, Alan J., Mike Ramsey, Bonifacio, Joer Galinato, Bonifacio, Roel Galinato, Edgar P. Blags. Edgar, Edgar M. Bile, looking forward for another helpful and uh, informative webinar series from LPG Gas Piping Safety Insulation System. Thank you. Yes, thank you also for uh, joining us. Okay, so uh, thank, you, thank you very much. We'll now have our uh, closing prayers. Heavenly Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, giving us this time again, fixing, uh, fixing our schedule so we'll be able to share uh, again this topic from Engineer Henry Suarez. Uh, thank you, Lord, for uh, continuously uh, guiding us, blessing us, not only us but also our family and loved ones, and uh, for keeping us away from the sickness of COVID and of course uh, keeping us away from accidents lord god uh, lord god we ask that you continue to bless our our means of livelihood maybe our work our business our assignments our work in the office uh, if you have projects uh, continue to guide and bless us lord uh, all of this, Lord, we ask in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ, who live and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Okay, and then uh, last messages here. Uh, Boni Merado, can we request medical gas piping for the next topic? We'll, uh, we'll uh, try to prepare one. We have what uh, is not yet really prepared, uh, Boni, but uh, give me time. Then, London sir, sisters, salamat, welcome. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much again for joining us and uh, uh, stay uh, healthy, uh, stay fit, and uh, of course, uh, one last message, resource man, God bless Engineer William, yes, God bless everybody, and of course, uh, um, let's make ourselves uh, immune, make ourselves strong, make uh, ourselves healthy, eat good food, plenty of vegetables and fruits, and of course, uh, uh, you uh, take vitamins uh, morning and evening. That's what I do. I, I take my vitamin C in the morning 